To achieve orbit, Glenn has to blast off atop a much more powerful rocket than the type used in the first two Mercury missions. And his launch comes off without a hitch. Roger that. But the untold story is that Glenn's Atlas rocket has a very high chance of exploding. The launch, not a catastrophic re-entry, is the supreme threat to his life. This was an Atlas rocket that it had been originally designed to be an intercontinental ballistic missile, but was being used to launch astronauts into space. And it was a very thin-skinned rocket. The skin of the rocket is so thin, it's thinner than a coin in your pocket. And this rocket literally couldn't support its own weight. When it wasn't full of fuel, it had to be pumped full of gas, otherwise it would crumple in on itself. This rocket was terrifying, and it kept failing. In five test flights of the Atlas before Glenn's mission, two explode during liftoff. A failure rate of 40%. It wasn't fully refined yet, and there wasn't time to fully refine it before John Glenn's flight. Nobody knew by any means for sure where the, the rocket wouldn't blow up on launch. Knowing that surviving the liftoff is close to a toss-up, Glenn records audio-taped farewell messages for his wife Annie and his two children. NASA has worked out just enough of the Atlas's kinks, and the launch is successful. And that's when Glenn's spirits are raised by the iconic send-off from fellow astronaut Scott Carpenter at Mercury Control. Godspeed, John Glenn. Not quite. Due to a glitch in the radio system, uh, Scott Carpenter wasn't on John Glenn's frequency and he couldn't hear it. Soaring into the heavens, Glenn carries the burden of bringing America neck and neck with the Soviets in the space race. <laughs>